OK, let's uh, talk more politics for you this morning. We're joined by the chair of the Labour Party, Annalise Dodds. It's very good to see you this morning. Look, I mean, I, I know there's real concern, obviously, as we've been reflecting this morning, on the cost of living crisis. I mean, that was addressed by the two contenders for number 10 last night. What did you make of what they had to say? Because we haven't heard anything from the Labour Party about what specifically what the Labour Party would do if in government to tackle cost of living? Well, I'm sorry to say I wholeheartedly disagree with that assertion. I mean, for example, Labour has been calling for months for the government to remove VAT on energy bills. Unlike Rishi Sunak, however, we've explained how we would pay for that. We've explained how we would pay for it by starting the windfall tax on oil and gas producers earlier. That tax that, of course, the Conservatives said they couldn't put into place for so long, but eventually buckled and did put into place. And we also wouldn't go ahead with the government's plans for the investment allowance. That's how we would pay for that reduction in VAT, in fact, removal of VAT on energy bills that we've called for for many, many months. We've also been calling for many months for the government to actually get a grip on the reasons for those high prices. And we've called for a mass home insulation programme for example, that would get people's bills down by £400, not just this year, but every year into the future. And of course, Labour's plans for energy security as well, sadly, have not been heeded by the Conservatives. We believe that we can have homegrown renewables in our country, that way creating more jobs domestically, as well as giving people more control over their energy. We've set out plans to, for example, double onshore wind, to end the blockages on nuclear and so on and so forth. And really, the leadership contenders right now for the Conservative Party leadership, they should be listening to those plans, not engaging in the kind of fantasy economics, frankly, that we've seen now, it appears, from both of them, because they're not explaining how they will pay for what they're setting out to the public. Well, Rishi Sunak said very clearly yesterday, I'll ditch VAT on, on energy bills. Presumably then that's something that you welcome. Yes, but as I just explained, he didn't say how he would pay for that. Labour said how we would pay for that VAT removal. We said we would pay for it with a removal uh, of ultimately the changes to the investment allowance that the government has been setting out and by starting that windfall tax earlier that the Tories stood in the way of for so many months. So Labour's been clear about how we would deliver our plans to deal with the cost of living crisis. We've seen the complete opposite from the Conservatives. And quite frankly, if removing VAT from energy bills is such a good idea, now that Sunak seems to be under pressure in the leadership contest, why hasn't he done it when he had the chance to do it as Chancellor when Labour first started to call for this, which was many, many months ago. In fact, I think it was even before the turn of the year. We're talking right back in January when Labour was setting out those plans and the Conservatives have still not caught up. Of, of Liz Truss then and her tax cuts. I mean, and, and you know, the, the details on that that we've had so far seem to be more based around corporation tax than anything else. But that would potentially potentially boost the economy, wouldn't it? Develop growth in our economy. Well, actually, the Conservatives' cuts to corporation tax over recent years have not boosted investment. They've not led to that extra growth. We've had some of the most anemic investment and growth levels of any country that's similar to ours in terms of its economy. And the Conservatives actually accepted this when they decided that they were going to stop that race to the bottom in corporation tax. It's only happened, uh, you know, during very, very recent months, actually, that they admitted they got it but, wrong. But, but forgive me, I, I, I can... Tax hadn't worked. I, and I, the I can, un I can understand your position, Annalise Dodds, in saying, no, actually, we, we, you know, I don't want to support a policy of one of the candidates here. But what are you saying, that corporation tax should actually go up to 25%, where it's, what is it, 12% in Ireland or whatever? I mean, how can that possibly be good for the economy? Well, all of this debate with respect took place many months ago when the Chancellor said that he was going to be stopping that race to the bottom on corporation tax in the UK because it hadn't delivered on that investment because we've not seen the increase in the size of our economy that had been promised to come from those cuts in corporation tax. You know, I speak with a lot of businesses, as does Rachel Reeves, 
our Shadow Chancellor and Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, what businesses say to us is that they need a change, not in corporation tax, they need a change in business rates. And you don't hear anything from the different candidates about how they will fundamentally reform that regime. Labour said that we will remove the business rates regime. It's so damaging to the prospects, particularly for small businesses. We'll remove that unfair regime. We'll replace it with something fairer that will actually promote the strong and secure growth that our country needs. Very quickly, come the 5th of September, uh, one person, either Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak, will be facing off against Keir Starmer. For the Labour Party, which candidate do you want it to be? Well, quite frankly, they are both continuity candidates. They both supported what the Conservatives have done over the last 12 years. They're both part of that regime that has led us to this situation where our economy is so lacking in strength and security, where growth is so low, predicted to be the lowest in the G20, aside from Russia in the future. They've been part of that, and it's not going to change, I'm afraid, regardless of which one ends up being the leader of the Conservative Party. Annalise Dodds, it's good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed.